Hello, my name is Larry Suskind. I'm a faculty member in the Department of Urban Studies and Planning at MIT. I teach environmental kinds of subjects. I teach energy related subjects and sustainable development related subjects. But what I want to talk about today is the rather startling moment we find ourselves in where people are opposing new renewable energy projects in their community. And I want to talk about why that's happening based on the research that we're doing in the Science Impact Collaborative in the Department of Urban Studies and Planning. And I want to talk about some of the lessons we've learned that could help to avoid some of the opposition to some of the renewable energy projects across the United States. It's absolutely crucial that we make these projects happen, quite a few of them. The way to reduce CO2 emissions is to build or make a transition to and build renewable energy facilities, whether those be onshore wind, offshore wind, solar rooftop solar, solar arrays of a large scale, geothermal plants, and I think some people would argue hydroelectric plants should continue to be listed as renewable energy facilities, and some people would argue nuclear power plants should be listed as renewable energy facilities. The ones I've been looking at primarily are solar, wind, geothermal, and the transmission lines that allow the energy produced in one place to be used in another place. The U.S. government last year, the federal government, made a huge commitment financially to infrastructure investment across the states. They also made it clear they favored renewable energy by offering tax breaks of various kinds to private investors who want to build renewable energy facilities. The problem is that just because you have the money and just because there's groups that have incentive to want to build doesn't mean you're going to be able to go ahead. The team of students that I've put together at MIT through the Science Impact Collaborative found almost 60 cases in just a few months of doing research where renewable energy projects have been blocked or stopped permanently from one coast to the other. All different kinds of projects. All at utility scale, not little tiny solar facilities in someone's backyard, but facilities designed to add substantially to the amount of electricity we can produce from non-fossil fuel sources. Why? Why are people going to great lengths to block proposed new renewable energy facilities? We've studied our 60 cases in some detail, following up with conversations with the people involved in each of those projects to the extent we could find them and talk to them. There are a lot of different reasons. This is not just people selfishly not wanting their communities to change, otherwise known as NIMBYs, not in my backyard. There's an assumption that well, if someone's opposed to something that someone else wants to do, it's because they're selfishly protecting their own place, their own interests, and not willing to do something for the good of the whole community. That turns out not to be the case in all of the controversies that we've studied. Instead, let me give you some examples of what we found. In the West, in particular, Native American tribes sued and intervened to try to stop facilities proposed on their land with no consultation with them. The 
federal government or the state government said, oh, well, this isn't private property. Uh, here, developer, this is a good spot. You could put your facility here. Well, it's required by law that there be consultation with native tribes. And when there wasn't consultation, the tribe intervened. It intervened not just because it was supposed to have a role in making this decision, but often because the particular plans that an investor from away had come up with picked exactly the spot in the land that they were sold or given where there were remains, historically significant remains of earlier ancestors, buried, artifacts buried, sacred sites. How could they pick in a large area exactly the spot that needed to be preserved and protected for ceremonial and religious reasons? Because they had no conversation with the people in the place. They used satellite data, they picked a spot, they got permission, they put a plan together as fast as they could, and they came to the regulatory authority for permission, and that's when the tribes heard about this. In some instances, groups of people living near the proposed facility, again, once something was announced, said, you can't put a facility there. Didn't you look at a map? That's an endangered and protected habitat. It's already mapped as a protected habitat by the federal and state government. What are you doing? You have 1,000 acres. Move it. Well, no, we have a plan. We paid an engineer to design our facility. We've laid everything out for this spot. We've put our application in. We're seeking permissions from the regulators. There's nothing about what we're proposing that's illegal. And then the others would say, oh, yes, there is. You can't be encroaching on endangered habitat. And then we go to court. And the project would be at least delayed and often stopped entirely. In some instances, developers had no interest in letting anyone know what they had in mind because they didn't want the land they didn't own yet to suddenly go up higher in price. So they secretly threw what are called straws, through people who didn't, in fact, say that they represented a facility developer, bought the rights to use certain land for a facility. And then again, designed it as quickly as they could using standard designs brought to them from different engineering consultants, only to discover that they had to also prepare an environmental impact assessment in order to get a permit. And the assessment made very clear that what they were proposing in terms of location, design, mitigation, compensatory options for people living nearby were inadequate. They certainly weren't the least environmentally harmful version of the project that could go ahead, and people objected. Again, we went to court in these instances, or we were engaged in political delays that slowed or stopped regulatory or permitting activities. In at least two states, legislators decided it was so important to build renewable energy facilities and the developers pressed the elected officials to let them go ahead because climate change requires shifting to renewable energy that the legislators preempted the normal local reviews. So local governments who usually have decision power over land use decisions found that, in this case, too late, too bad, decisions were being preempted by the county or the state. That just caused the unit of local government to sue, 
and to politically seek some kind of redress in the state legislature. And again, opposition and delay. We found a whole series of instances in which projects were stopped. But in 14 of our 60 cases, they were eventually built. That wasn't because the developers won in court and shut down local resistance. It was because the developers opted out because the delay meant they weren't going to get a return on their investment fast enough, so they basically sold the site and the idea of the facility to another investor at a reduced rate. And what did the new investor do? What the first investor should have done. Sit down and talk to the people who are upset about what was proposed. Oh, you mean the turbine is going to only be 50 feet from your house? Well, that's terrible. Why don't we move it over here and change the array? Oh, okay, fine, then we'll support your plan. Farmers who were saying that you're asking the city, the town, to rezone the land industrial right next to us. We're an agricultural zone. There'll be so much pressure to convert our agricultural land to industrial land that farming will become untenable. Oh, okay, let's work with you to pass a new plan for the whole town, a new master plan that designates new regions on a permanent basis, new land use areas on a permanent basis, and not do this piecemeal. There were so many instances, 14 in particular, in which conversation aimed at understanding the interests, the needs, the values of local people, led to a joint problem-solving conversation that then allowed the project in a new and different form, in a slightly different location, with somewhat different technology, with compensation to people adversely affected, with promises to do things off-site that that community required as an indication of enough environmental benefit to counteract what were unavoidable environmental costs. MIT is proposing to create a renewable energy facility siting clinic in the coming year. And at this clinic, communities battling about these kinds of proposed facilities, if they all agree, all the people fighting, can bring their case to MIT, to the clinic. And student teams will work with all sides and a professional mediator to try to engage in joint fact-finding, to try to engage in collaborative problem-solving, and to come up with a version of the Project PLUS, where PLUS is what it takes beyond the original proposal to meet the interests of those who are adversely affected by the proposed facility. Just because the facility's positive, all the gains to all the gainers outweigh the losses to the losers, doesn't mean it should be a go. There should be an effort to try to take some of those gains and use them to offset any losses, to make people, to hold people harmless to make it possible for them to not need to oppose to protect their interests. It's very worrisome. There are other states right now, and there are philanthropies supporting efforts in other states to try to preempt local review on the grounds that it empowers NIMBY behavior. I would argue just the opposite that the effort to preempt local engagement in meaningful joint problem solving is going to cause delays and take even longer to make the transition to renewable energy. So the moral of this story is go slow to go fast. It's absolutely crucial 
that the people who will be affected by renewable energy plans, as important as they are to meeting our climate goals, have a say in how those projects go forward.